Greetings Jeepers. So what we're going to do today, we'll walk you through how to uh, rebuild the uh, front knuckle on this uh, Dana 25 from a CJ2A 1947. Ultimately, this is a finished product on the driver's side and we'll step you through on how to uh, put the seals on. We'll step you through on preloading the bearings within the knuckle. Uh, setting shims and then putting the rest of the components on it. Passenger side is uh, stock all cleaned up and we'll walk you through on how to put that together. Here's a high overview of all the different parts we're going to install in the knuckle installation. There's actually quite a bit of parts here but I have everything labeled out so it's easy to follow. I'll go through everything what we need to do to install the knuckle and get it properly rebuilt. From all these parts I will start right here. This is our knuckle. First we have to install our studs into our knuckles. I'll show you a trick how to install your studs. These are a stud kit you can get and they are just 3 8 fine thread with a nut and lock washer. And then you're going to also have to install your cups and bearings directly into your axle housing. Once you got your cups and bearings installed in your axle housing and we got our studs installed in our knuckles then there will be shims placed on top of your knuckle. There'll be a kingpin placed and this will go right into your bearing and that will be preloaded with a shim kit. There's a variety of different sizes here so it's kind of test trial until you get the right amount of pull. When you get the correct amount of shims installed in your knuckle on your kingpin it will be between 12 and 16 pounds and use a trusty old pull scale. Not a very complicated tool but that will get your right preload on your knuckle. Now moving to the right of our board, we will get to our knuckle seal kit. This will be installed on the back side of your knuckle to prevent oil leaking out of your knuckle. There's a felt pad, some rubber, and your metal plates that will hold everything together. And then there's going to be eight bolts installed. They're 5 16 fine thread, 3 quarter inch long with lock washers. Now moving left on our board, we'll get to the other side of our knuckle. And this is where we'll install our spindle directly onto our knuckle and we'll just use some the right stuff 90 minute Permatex gasket maker. This is your spindle to knuckle that'll prevent oil from leaking out of your spindle between your knuckle. And to attach your spindle to your knuckle there will be six bolts and these are three eighths fine thread three quarter inch long with lock washers but make sure the grade eight that's very important. And then we will move on to our backing plate. But actually your backing plate is installed directly onto your spindle. So these bolts actually go right through your backing plate, right to the spindle, and then thread right into the knuckle. On the early CJ2As, there was a brake hose guard installed on top of the kingpins, and that would protect your flex line from the elements, and it would just be located in here. When you're installing all of your bolt threads and that will be exposed to your oil in your knuckle, you make sure you use some Permatex gasket maker aerobic, and that will prevent oil leakage right through your bolts. What we found is that uh, we had two different types of actual shafts. Uh, one is the original type, uh, which is the Bendix, and you can see there's ball bearings in there. A good, good axle shaft, but uh, much superior to that is the uh, Spicer, which has a joint of this type. So we're going to run in this 47 both Spicer uh, axle shafts. The first step is we have to install the bearing cups into our axle housing. So just don't overthink it, just get a hammer and just pound it in. Hammer it in until it seats all the way down where you can't pound it any further. And then we'll just repeat the same step for the bottom. And we have both of the cups seated all the way in. Now we have to pack our knuckle bearings with grease. You can use some multi-purpose high temperature wheel bearing grease. And we'll just get some on the glob on our gloves here. And then the trick is just to kind of hit it like this over and over and over until you get grease coming through the top here. Continue to hit your bearing in your hand until you get grease coming out like that. On the other side, we know that we have grease fully packed in our bearings, and we repeat the same step on the other bearing. First, apply a small film of grease in the inside of your cup so your bearing will ride. And then we'll put the bearing, make sure the nice film of grease is not outside your bearing, too. And it's nice and even though, and then we'll just put the bearing in there with the smaller end going down. And it's the same step for the bottom, we'll just put a small film of grease on the bottom cup. 
and we'll put our bearing in the bottom. But, but there's so much grease on the bearing that it'll just stick in there for now. Well, next, what we're going to do is uh, get our knuckle uh, studs in. So the studs have threads on it. One is longer than the other, and you want to have the longer side uh, up, and the shorter side will thread directly into the into the knuckle. And each uh, one of these studs will apply this this Permatex to it and uh, put them in so we minimize leakage of oil from the from the studs. Just give it a little dab of gasket sealer. Just apply it around the short end. Uh, do that for all eight studs. With your gasket maker now applied to your stud, we will insert it into the top of our knuckle. Just threaded it in. And you can only go so tight by hand, so we have to use the double knot technique to tighten your stud. So we'll thread on one nut. These are three eighths fine thread nuts. And then we'll put on our second nut on top. And then we'll tighten these two together and this will create friction. And then we can tighten our stud in. Now we'll tighten your two nuts together as tight as you can go. And now we'll just tighten the top nut and that will thread in our stud deeper into the knuckle. And then once your two knots start spinning together, you know it's nice and tight. Now we can break these two knots apart. And now we keep this with the other seven studs. Once you've finished double knotting all of your studs into your knuckle, there'll be some excess sealant coming out of all your studs. So I'd wipe all that off because when you put your shim on, the shim won't flip exactly flat onto the top of your knuckle. Next, coming over to our workbench here, we'll just apply some grease onto the kingpin uh, on both the top and bottom. And this was, is going to fit into the bearings in a moment. So on these knuckles, you want to make sure you get the right knuckle on the correct side. And uh, the way to do that, you can see the, the, uh, this part of the knuckle is, is offset. It has a shorter distance to the top and this will face the front of the vehicle. One note is make sure you install your rubber seal and your felt for the backside of your knuckle for the oil. This is because you can't get this on after you get your knuckle all tightened down. So we'll put this on first. First goes your felt seal onto your knuckle. Now you put on your rubber seal and there's actually a little point like that where you can slip it on on the top or bottom. And this is what your seal and your rubber seal looks like on the back side of your knuckle housing. So once you get your uh, top and bottom kingpin in with at least one shim, uh, and uh, this is trial and error, so the more shims you add, the less the preload is, and with the less shims you have, the higher the preload gets. And don't forget, uh, since this is trial and error, you, you do not want to put lock washers on in case you have to uh, add or subtract shims. Torque these kingpin bolts up. Just snug them up to begin with and crisscross patterns probably what you want to do. And once we have the top snugged up and the bottom snugged up, we'll torque all of the nuts on top and bottom to uh, 30, 35 foot pounds. We're torquing it up to 30 foot-pounds on all nuts, top and bottom. And then we will uh, give it the pull test. So now we've just attached a pull scale to the uh, knuckle and we're just giving it a pull and once it breaks away, take note of how many pounds. And in our case, we got about 12, 13 pounds. So we're a little shy. So that means we will have to take the kingpin, spin off these nuts, take the kingpin out, and then probably put a medium shim, shim in to bring the pull pounds up. Just break all of your nuts and we'll take off the nuts on our kingpins and we'll pop both kingpins out of the knuckle and then we'll replace the shims. We just are going to replace it with a slightly thinner shim so that a thinner shim will uh, increase the pull. With our medium shim in there now, we will put in our top kingpin and just push on. 
Now with both of your kingpins on, we'll repeat the same steps to get this all torqued up and we'll test the preload again. We're checking the pull another time here and when it breaks away, it's in a range of 15, 16 pounds and that's on the high side of the 12 to 16, but that's where we wanna be given we put in new bearings here and that should just work in nicely. So it's all torqued to 30 pounds, the kingpin uh, bolts, and we ended up using one medium shim and one thin, thin shim to get it to the uh, 16 pound pole range for the preload. If you purchase a new spicer axle, there may be these rubber seals on the joints and you have to remove them because you can't get oil to get in the bearings in there. So we'll have to take off all four of these seals to just pull off and there's four of them right around. To remove this seal, just use a knife to cut it and with some pliers behind it. And then just cut and now we can just pull out the seal from the spicer axle. Four rubber seals removed from your axle. Once you set the preload of 16 pounds approximately on your knuckle, we'll disassemble our knuckles to take off your kingpins and everything. And then we will now have to install our axle first. It's very important that we install our axle first because it will not fit through your knuckle. But first we're going to oil up our knuckle. We'll put it some oil in the joint and we'll also put some oil where it's going to ride on the bushings, which would be here. It's a quick shot everywhere. We'll also put a little bit of oil on the bushing right here. With everything nicely oiled up, we'll just push our axle into the front axle housing. It's so it'll lock into the gears in our diff. You'll be able to tell and feel when it does. Just like that, give it a spin. It spins our diff, and now we can reassemble our knuckle. Push your axle through the knuckle. We'll just slide it on and get everything lined up with the kingpins. It's the same steps that you've already done, so we'll just fast forward until we get to the lock washer stage. I would just hand tighten your nuts on the top and the bottom of your kingpin just so it holds your knuckle in place and everything doesn't fall apart. And now we can move to installing our seal on the back of our knuckle. Now push your rubber seal on the back of your knuckle. Just start from the bottom and then work yourself up. And then we get to the top. We have our joint at the very top just so oil won't leak through as gravity is downwards. And then we also have our bolts with the gasket sealer on them. And then we'll just thread on our bolts right through this plate. And then we'll have our felt in between. And then that will get all torqued up. Thread your bolts right through your plate, through your felt and into your knuckle on the top four. And your plate goes this direction or horizontal. And we'll put our bottom one on next. Fast forward here, we have both our plates on for oil seal. Now we'll just tighten these up snugly and then we will torque this to 15 foot pounds. Once you got the back seal on your knuckle, we'll put lock washers on the bottom kingpin and the top we'll have to put on our brake line hose guard on the top of our kingpin. Slide it on and we'll put lock washers and nuts and then we'll torque everything to 30 foot pounds. Once we got everything assembled, this is the final torque at 30 foot pounds at the top of our kingpins. So we'll just tighten them all just like that. And we'll do the same step for all eight of these nuts on our kingpin on the top and the bottom. Once you got your knuckle fully built and torqued to spec, now we have to continue building onto our knuckle. And that includes attaching our spindle directly to the front of our knuckle. And that will also include installing our brake backing plate. And we'll install this by using six grade eight bolts. These are three quarter inch long, three eighths fine thread. A little bit of acetone, just on a paper towel. Make sure that's all grease free on the knuckle. That's where we're gonna put the gasket maker. And then on your spindle, just uh, similarly wipe it around, get it all nice and clean. If you install a spicer axle into your front axle, make sure you install a flange bushing into your spindle as this flange will ride on this part on your spicer axle. So what I'm gonna do is just apply a little bit of lube uh, right into the spindle bushing. 
keep everything nicely lubed and similarly um, just put apply a little bit of lube on onto this part of the axle shaft where the spindle rides now it's time to gasket seal up everything so we'll put the right stuff gasket maker on this part of our knuckle and this part of the spindle and then we'll also apply our robot gasket maker to the bolts to prevent as much oil leakage as we can. All right, just going to slide the spindle on to where we put the gasket maker. And generally line up the holes. We've mounted uh, the spindle, so the this slot here for the hub washers is generally on the upside of the uh, spindle. Now install your brake backing plate with your hose facing upwards, and we'll just push on right into your spindle. And we have to line up all the holes, and it goes right through everything. And then we'll use these bolts that we already applied our robot gasket maker to as a lock washer on. We'll just thread it right through, starting on one side. And just work yourself around. Work yourself around and install all the bolts into the holes. Just drain them in. And now we will just tighten them up snugly with a ratchet and then we'll torque it to spec. These bolts up to 30 pounds, which is spec. You like to do it in a crisscross pattern. That kind of, that kind of evens the uh, pressure out. And there you go. That's it. Subscribe. <laughs>